Here we see the confluence of two wonderfully exposed and exhumed river channels that are some 50 million years old in the desert of Wyoming. I love to hike along the tops of these channels looking for clues to Earth's history. This channel caught my eye because I think I see animal footprints in the sands here in the top of the channel. Let me show you what I'm looking at. I've put my key uh, to, to my Jeep there for scale, so you kind of know. And see those depressions in, the, in there? They're here and there everywhere. Nice little round depressions here by the key, back off the edge. And if I walk along, we'll see some more. Some, a nice one here and here. Here, oh yeah, look, this looks like it could have some toe prints in it. Here, 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 etc. cetera. Um, they're scattered about on that boulder there. Really interesting. Um, they're all over in the, in this on top of this channel sandstone. Let me find a couple more. There's a nice one. Further down the channel is this nice example. I'll be talking about this boulder more in a minute. Boy, this really captures my imagination as a geologist because now I've been looking at the depositional environment, thinking of these rivers, the, the beautiful vegetation, the uh, subtropical climate averaging around 80 degrees Fahrenheit, you know, the average temperature here in Wyoming, and all the animals about, just a spectacular ecosystem. And now I get to imagine these larger animals like maybe a Corypidon or a, or a Uintotherium or other animals that are in the small channels, in these rivers, uh, walking around. Now that's not surprising, is it? Now I know there are going to be many of you out there wondering and thinking, well, how do you know that those depressions in that sand are, are animal footprints? And uh, that's a fair question, right? And and I understand that. But let me approach that in two ways. The first way is, is that nature has patterns. And if you go in your own world, wherever you happen to be, go to a sandy channel, whether it's an estuary or a little canal even, a ditch, a small river, and look at the top surface and see what it looks like. You'll see some nice flow textures and things like ripples and, and features that are normal to the river. But depressions like this are unusual and out of place or anomalous. And whenever I see that, whenever I see something out in nature that's anomalous, I start thinking, well, what's going on here? Okay, that's number one. The second thing I want to mention is, is that uh, we can use analogs or analogies. And I happened to stumble one uh, on one, excuse me, right out here by this channel, interestingly enough. So let's go look at this, what I think it could be an analog, okay? So right behind me here is the actual channel that we've been walking on, okay? And right here at my feet is a nice trackway of, well, cows. Turns out there are cows that graze out here, and I have my key out here for scale. And this cow had been walking in the mud, sinking in, okay? And you see a nice pattern in the footsteps, so that makes it easier, doesn't it? It's harder to see those in the channel. And you see these depressions, and sometimes the footprints are pretty clear, okay? And so now you recognize cow footprints out here, cow tracks. And then you notice that even the subtle ones, you start go, oh, those are cow tracks. Those are cow footprints. Okay, so we're following some cow tracks here, backwards actually. <clears throat> this cow's moving towards me. There's a nice print here of the cow track. And I want to use this cow track to help you. They're coming along here. You see them. And then you see subtleties out here. In this outwash here, there's a natural flow, right? 
with nature undisturbed, uh, you wouldn't expect this very slight depression or up here by my keys here, right? These subtle little depressions. So that's a good example to me as a geologist. This wash, this little outwash has a natural feel to it. Things that you expect and then you have things that are anomalous. If I showed you just one of these subtle depressions in this wash, you would never believe it was an old cow track. But when you have context, then it becomes pretty obvious and you go, oh yeah, okay, I've got it. Now that your eyes have been tuned to cow tracks, let's look at a new area. What do you think of these? See these subtle depressions with a little mud in there, with mud cracks in there? Yeah. Now you see something like this and you think with confidence, oh, those are just cow footprints, right? So that's a really powerful method that geologists can use to help them determine things that are out of place. And if you're observant as you walk around nature, you'll see some things like that as well. You'll start to understand what is out of place, shall we say. I wanted to show you this boulder that has broken off the channel here to see some fascinating crayfish burrows. See these small holes all over in here? I see burrowing everywhere in this sandstone. And in this boulder we see both crayfish burrows and tracks. I just imagine in my mind, you know, these happy animals standing in the water, maybe, maybe eating some of the grasses off the banks. So how did we preserve these tracks? And how do we know that these depressions here weren't created much later uh, in time from weathering and erosion? The river at some point goes somewhere else and it leaves in a, this abandoned. It abandons this area and the water's no longer there, but muds come in from channels nearby during a flood stage. You may have seen that around in your part of the world. You know, when a river floods, it leaves lots of mud. And here we go, I'm depositing this red mud. But as you bury this, the sand gets cemented. Cement all the sand grains get cemented together. That's very, very common in, in sandstones. So now we have a hard sandstone with these dimples and surface features covered with mudstones. And we bring it forward 50 million years in time. It got buried and buried. Now it's back up to the, uh, uh, being uncovered by erosion. So let me do that with my fingers here and uncover this. And it turns out that the contrast on the hardness is so much between the sandstone, the cemented sandstone, and the soft mudstones mm -hmm. that it essentially reveals a surface this beautiful surface that you can walk around on on top of the channels as you walk around on them it's fun to do you see these interesting shapes and textures and and the crayfish burrows that are revealed because it uncovers it as it was left and i have actually gone to places where you can find channels that that are still just barely starting to be uncovered. You know, they're up against into a hillside or something. And I can walk, let me put a little more mudstone here. I can walk right up to here where it has just been literally uncovered in the last few years. And guess what? I can see that same texture that I see back here where it has been uncovered much longer ago. So that helps a scientist, a geologist, start to develop confidence that the surface features they're seeing on here, on top of these channels, really represent what it looked like. It's the end of the day, so I take some time to do what I love the most. Wander around in nature, reading the rocks, and pondering my place in the vast history of the Earth. Why, I hope you've enjoyed this little adventure we've gone on together. I'm really grateful for all of you that watch these videos. It, it motivates me to get out and hike around and do geology and bring the geology to your home. Thank you.